Welcome cadet and congratulations on making the most important decision of your life by joining our ranks as a hell diver. Let's not stand on ceremony and jump right into it. Let's start with everything on the ship, starting with the ship management menu. We have three options up here, destroyer, stratagems, and ship module. On the destroyer page, you can see the current name of your ship. Mine is SES Prophet of Mercy. Nice little Halo 2 reference for all our OG fans out there. We can see the progression of modules unlocked, which I'll explain in a moment. And here you can also change the name of your ship. Moving on to stratagems. Stratagems consist of various types of support that you and your squad mates can call in to assist with the completion of a mission. They can range anywhere from eagle airstrikes that come out of the hangar to orbital cannons that launch directly from your vessel. They also consist of support weapons that you can drop for yourself and your squad mates that range from sniper rifles to anti-tank missiles, heavy ordnance, as well as defense stratagems like mortar launchers and Gatling sentries that will cover you while you make moves. Now, there are several different types of currencies in Helldivers 2, but we're gonna be focusing specifically on requisition slips for now, as you can see by the yellow R on the bottom right. This is what you use to purchase new stratagems. They can be found by completing missions or in the game itself when you open certain points of interest. Lastly, in the ship management menu, we have the ship module, and this will provide upgrades for each of our stratagems. So if you look at the description in the bottom right, you can see affected stratagems and their upgrade effect. Each category on the left corresponds to the type of stratagem it'll affect. So for orbital cannons, this will affect our orbital lasers, precision strikes, 380s, and so on and so forth. Now, purchasing these items from the ship module section utilizes another currency, which is split up into three subcategories, common, rare, and super samples. And as the name suggests, the rarer they are, the harder they are to get. The amount and type of samples you can find in any given mission is dictated by the difficulty you are playing on. Moving on, we're gonna head over to the armory menu. In this menu, you can change your weaponry, your armor, you can look at some of the information for your character and adjust that, look at your boosters for when you start a mission, as well as see your overall career stats. Oh God. Now there are actually two ways you can change your weapons. You can do it whenever you want here when you're at this menu, or you can change your equipment right before you launch into combat. I won't get into the specifics about which weapons are best for which scenario, but just know it does matter, and they are split into multiple categories as you can see here. Your secondary isn't quite as important, but it really depends on your play style and what you wanna be pulling out when your primaries run out of ammo and you're being completely swarmed by a bunch of hunters. God, I hate hunters. Lastly, there are different types of grenades. You have your standard frag grenade or you have impact grenades and there are others, but I haven't purchased them yet because I haven't bought anything in the war bond, which is another category I'll cover in a second. Over in the armory section, as of right now, your armor is the only thing that will change stats. Your helmet and your cape are purely for aesthetic purposes. Armor is currently split into three categories. We have light, medium, and heavy. General rule of thumb. Oh God, that looks horrible. Light armor will give you a boost in stamina regen and speed while dropping your protection or armor rating a tad. Medium strikes a balance between the two, while heavy obviously favors a higher armor rating at the cost of speed and stamina regen. Now, each of these armor sets, if you look over to the right, have a passive, and this is where things get a little more interesting. So for this particular piece of armor, the Executioner, it's fortified, so this reduces recoil when crouching or prone by 30% and provides 50% resistance to explosive damage. Now again, choosing your armor is heavily dependent on the scenario you're gonna be in, or if you just wanna look cool. There are instances where you might be spending a lot of time holding your ground, and so some extra explosive protection is better than needing to run super fast. And if you're on a map that requires you to transfer valuable data from one click to another, then you might opt for something a bit stealthier and gives you more stamina regen. Moving on to the character menu, we have the first option of body type, which gives you the choice between a big brawny Alpha Sigma Chad or being a lean, stealthy e-boy with emotional issues. In voice pack, you have a set of four default options, two male, two female, I prefer to keep it on randomized because it's just a nice little reminder that every Helldiver you deploy is a different one and the last one you just played as 
will never be seen again. Emotes in this game, unfortunately, you can only have one equipped at a time. I typically like to run Salute because it is short, professional, it looks good when no one is around or when you're interacting with a teammate, or the hug, which, you know, hugs are nice and it looks like you are embracing the 500 kilo you just dropped on the enemy base in front of you. Most of these require some form of interaction, but whatever you do, please don't use the scout handshake. I think it's hilarious, but it will get you kicked from some lobby, so just you've been forewarned. Moving on to victory poses, you can randomize this. These take place at the end of every mission. When you successfully extract, you'll be presented front and center for all to admire in your full glory. And if you didn't, then you'll be off to the side and probably cut off from the frame. So this doesn't matter in that case. Your player card is what displays behind your head when you're launching for a mission. And your title is simply the name associated with your current rank that displays on your little nameplate in the bottom left corner in game. You won't really ever need to go to this booster menu. You select these as you're prepping for a mission. This just gives you an overview of what's actually available. So if you want to go through and see what you have, you can check this menu here. And then the career menu shows you all of the horrible mistakes that you've ever made. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get more weapons? How do I get more gear? I'll show you. If you look at the very top, you see acquisitions. We're going to open that menu here. Here in the acquisition center, we have three menus, war bonds, super store, and super credits. So these war bonds are battle passes, sort of. The main difference between this and a battle pass is hypothetically, you could acquire every item in the game without spending a dime of real money. And the way that you do this is by spending super credits which is the blue currency on the top right here. As you can see, the Cutting Edge War Bond costs a thousand super credits. And if I really wanted to, I could purchase super credits from this page right here. And you can see 150 costs $1.99 and it increases as you purchase more. But super credits can actually be acquired in game at points of interest. Now keep in mind, you are going to be using a different currency to purchase items within the battle pass. And these are called medals, which are the golden skull medals in the top right. These can also be acquired from points of interest in missions, but they also accumulate through the completion of operations. And operations are collections of missions, which I'll explain later. It incentivizes people to play together for longer, which is a really beautiful feature of Helldivers 2. One more thing to note about these war bonds, in order to progress to the next page, as you can see, this is split into three pages, you have to purchase the appropriate amount of items on the page prior. So if you look at the bottom, it says spend 50 more medals to unlock. I can't get to page three until I spend those 50 medals on page two. So you might as well get things and try them. There's no point in hoarding your medals as I clearly have been doing. One more thing to note about super credits is they can be found at any difficulty. The only thing that changes at different difficulties are super samples. And that's it, you understand all the currencies at this point. Okay, now we're getting to the action. Over here, we can access the galactic map. And on this layer of the menu, we can see all the places that are currently liberated with Super Earth right in the middle, as it should be. We can see the entirety of the galactic war effort, which factions control which regions based on color, how much of that area has been liberated, and how many Helldivers are currently, as we speak, liberating that section of space. We can also see our major order and how much time is left to complete it. Major orders are essentially timed objectives that are given to the entire community, and if you've contributed to them by the time they're completed, you will receive an extra set of medals. Below major orders, we have personal orders, which are daily objectives that you can complete for a small boost in medals as well. Bear in mind that for personal orders, you specifically don't have to be the person to complete it. Anyone in your squad could fulfill the requirements and it will also count for you as well. If we select a region, we can see which planets are currently liberated and which ones give us the option to work on. So Heath is 99% liberated. If we want to partake in this one, we better do it fast. We can also see our ship hovering over Angel's Venture and the white crosshair icon over each planet indicates that it is a major order location. We can see the Helldiver count on each planet, and we can also quick play and change our difficulty from here. I can see where all the operation positions are, as well as currently active Helldivers that I could potentially join along with their squad size. Now the Helldivers that are visible are 
lobbies set to public, while the ones with this emanating beacon represent Helldivers that have actively called for reinforcements. So they're actually looking for you to join them. One of the features I absolutely love when choosing operations are the day-night cycle. So you can see right next to our circular selector, there's a sun icon, and it of course changes when I move to the dark side of the planet. It also displays the time at which it is on this very point of interest. And you can see that minutes move at a second's pace in real life, hours move at a minute's pace, so on and so forth with each time frame. If you look at the very bottom, you can see as I change difficulties, it affects the types of samples that will be available in that operation. So level four is the minimum for rare samples. Level seven is the minimum for super samples. So when I hover over one of these, I am selecting an operation. An operation consists of one or more missions. As you can see at level four here, we have two missions in this operation. Why is this important? Well, if I decide to complete one mission, but then leave the operation and complete another one, I will not be able to go back and get the full rewards that exponentially increase by completing that operation. This incentivizes players to just go through the entire operation together so that they can reap the most reward at the very end. Another important thing to note, if you fail a mission, and failing a mission means not completing the primary objectives, you will fail the entire operation. So make sure you choose these wisely and are willing to commit to every mission in that operation. Difficulty does not affect health in any way. It merely affects the density and types of enemies that you will encounter. On lower difficulties, certain high level enemies will never appear. And on the highest difficulties, the most dangerous types of enemies will have the highest chance of spawning. Once we're ready to go, you and your squad make your way over to your hell pods and we get ready for the fun, except not quite yet. Some of your most vulnerable moments in a mission are when you first drop and you don't have your stratagems ready to go, you're a bit disoriented, you don't know where you are in relation to the enemies or the objectives. My general rule of thumb when choosing a drop location is choose the safest place over the most convenient place. And now we are going to select our stratagem. So on this smaller menu, these are the stratagems that are included by default, which are our reinforcements, respawns essentially, your SOS beacon, which you can use to call in more Helldivers, and your resupply beacon, which can be used to resupply on ammunition, stims, and grenades. You typically have four slots for your own personal stratagems, as well as a booster, but in some cases, weather conditions on the map can prevent the use of a fourth stratagem, so you may be locked to three. This only really occurs on higher difficulties. I also have the option of a booster. These modify the efficiency of your entire squad by allowing them to resist injury, allowing them to run faster or traverse difficult terrain. It really depends on what everyone else is bringing and what you also want to contribute to the mission. Once we have everything selected and our teammates have everything selected, We'll launch. Start jamming out to your favorite tunes. When you are dropping in, the very first thing you should be thinking about is where is the safest piece of cover I can get to? The very next thing you should be doing is either pulling out your support stratagems or checking to see where your first location is, your first main objective. Focus on the orange primary objectives first because at the very least, if everything else goes south, you can still get a mission complete. Even if you don't extract, even if you don't get any other objectives done, this will allow you to continue with the operation. Once you select a location on your map, that location will now be pinged up above in your compass for easy reference. Every objective requires a different method of completion. Some you can just take out with a grenade. Others will require the use of a terminal or even a hell bomb in the case of hardened targets. You will see these points of interest at the top of the compass. This is where you might find super samples, or in this case, a hell bomb, which can be used to take out bigger enemies if they walk past it. In some instances, you'll even find support weapons like this railgun. Every weapon by default is aimed in third person view with a dynamic crosshair. You'll also notice there is a sway as I move. So the white solid circle represents where my mouse is, but the larger hollow circle represents where the shot will go as I'm moving. With all weapons, you can hip fire, aim down sight, third person or first person. Okay, so let's talk about reloading. This is not Call of Duty. When you shoot an enemy, do not, I repeat, do not immediately start discarding your magazines. 
Ammo is handled realistically in this game, which means that if you have five bullets left in the mag and you throw that mag away, those five bullets are gone. So the best way to play is to either reload when you are incredibly low and need to prepare for another fight, or just burn through every piece of ammo and then reload. Some objectives have multiple ways in which you can complete them, such as terminating this illegal broadcast. I can either interact with the terminal, or if I have the appropriate stratagem, I can call that in on the objective. Once the primaries are complete, you can move on to any secondaries and then any points of interest if you want to collect those super credits, requisition slips, or medals. Throwing down resupply beacons will replenish your ammo as well as your stims and grenades. So make sure you reload and stim before grabbing a resupply so you can get the most bang for your buck. Red sections on the map represent bug nests or automaton fabricators which can be destroyed. Pro tip, if you happen to pass by the extraction point early while carrying valuable samples, consider dropping them so that they are not lost during combat. Once you are done with all the primaries, you are able to call in for extraction. There are actually two ways of extracting in this game, so you can call in for extraction once the main objectives are completed or you can allow the mission timer to elapse completely. However, in the second case, you have to reach extraction by a certain point or the shuttle will just leave without you. Also bear in mind, once mission time elapses, you will no longer have access to any reinforcements or stratagems, so you are incredibly vulnerable. It's much better to get primary objectives completed sooner rather than later. Once the mission is complete, you will see how many of the objectives you finished, as well as the outposts you've destroyed and Helldivers extracted. It'll also show squad impact and how close you are to cumulatively completing that with the rest of the community. And then you'll see a list of stats where you can argue with your teammates about who actually contributed. You might be on the clock, but remember to progress safely and decisively. Move with a purpose. Fighting every enemy on the map is a surefire way to waste time and resources. Don't hesitate to use stratagems when you need them, and if there is a lull in the combat, rearm those eagles. While I recommend playing solo at max difficulty for the sake of gaining confidence in a variety of bad situations, there is no score advantage or multiplier for playing this way. You will almost always be better off playing with a squad of randoms, because even if they aggro every enemy on the map and burn through reinforcements, this will open windows for you to avoid patrols and complete objectives. And from personal experience, if you use your ping wheel to make suggestions and share information, or better yet, use your microphone for something other than panicking, players in this game tend to get on the same page pretty quick. That's the beauty of being part of the Helldivers community. If you're interested in seeing me coach a brand new Helldiver through max difficulty in real time, check out this video right here. Consider liking and subscribing, I'd be very appreciative of it. And if you are interested in gaming with some like-minded individuals, consider joining our Discord located down below in the description. Best of luck, and I'll see you on the front lines, Helldiver.